Let's talk about this thing. So I finally got a new EVO equation for you folks. I decided to make a painting about it and it has been a while. I started by creating a background. My favorite style is that splatter kind of flowing thing inspired by Jackson Pollock with a hint of Ralph Steadman. Once I had the rough image, it was time to slap on the equation. I wasn't too happy with the lavender at first, so I gave it a little smudge. Then came the black sharpie. The general idea was there, but the painting was still far from finished. The purple highlight wasn't quite sitting with me either. It made the letters too fuzzy in my opinion. I added the unit circle as a hint as to the nature of this numeric monstrosity. In case you didn't notice yet, the equation involves complex numbers. Then came the time to add another layer of splatters. I wanted less uniformity, but the red felt a little too intense. I finally ended up with a distinct green splash just over the fading unit circle. And that was it. I decided enough is enough. I sometimes have to restrain myself from overpainting my paintings. So here it is. This might be the final work of 2024 for me. But who knows, I feel like I might have a burst of creativity for the end of the year. As for this expression, I originally thought of leaving it for you guys to figure it out on your own. But I decided to include a breakdown anyway. So if you don't want spoilers, now is the time to pause watching. So let's dig in, shall we? What do you think this entire thing reduces to? Well, like I said before, we are dealing with complex numbers. You can see this by all the eyes scattered throughout this beast, which of course refers to the famous square root of negative one, the imaginary unit. Also you can see I put a bunch of E's and Pi's into the thing. It kind of set a homage to Euler's identity, E to the Pi I equal to negative one. Now on top you have this scary looking summation. It actually is a combination of two other sums. Moving some of the terms around, you can see that I basically combined the Tyler series for E with this other sum which gives us pi. And finally, that I makes the whole thing into a complex number. I thought using E and pi in this way would be an interesting exercise. You can see that our complex number also appears over here. But I'll leave this one for later. For now, let's take a look at our denominator. We also have the E and the pi down here, here and here. But there's a small deception on my part, because these are not the same as those two. Precisely because I chose to use them as the real and imaginary parts of our complex number. Now, for this cosh minus i. It is just another trig identity for cos1. And the same goes for this whole thing. It is just another way to write i sine 1. You can see that this already looks more like our regular complex numbers. A really cool maneuver can be done using the Moivre's technique. This exponent can be distributed like so. And we can see that we just had two identical complex numbers all along. And both of them equal to our e plus pi i. Which leaves us with this final term here. I just wanted to write our complex number in the form of n to the z. So I came up with this thing. But it simply works out to just another version of the same number. And finally we get to see what this whole thing was all along. If you would have guessed that this whole equation was undefined, you would have been right. Well, I hope you enjoyed this dive into creative maths. I certainly find complex numbers quite fascinating. And making those elaborate monstrosities is one of my favorite pastimes. Now, if you want an extra puzzle, see what you can reduce this little expression into. Well, thank you for watching, and I hope to see you all in the next one. And of course, don't forget to subscribe, like, and share.